Welcome to Caribbean Insight. We have an explosion of Caribbean videos lined up for you. Tonight, you will be experiencing international artists displaying the cultural rhythms of soca, calypso, reggae, dancehall, and salsa. So relax, and let's take a ride down the Caribbean. I'm the Lord Kitchener, and I'm um, having a wonderful time here with Caribbean Insight. I think it's a wonderful organization, and I hope you will do as I do, keep listening to them. Greetings from TNT. I am Tigress. This is the original dance master. This is Marshall Montana. I'm Brother Valentino. This is Marcia Miranda. Caribbean Insight. Yes, I watch them all the time. They're bad. Caribbean Insight. Ready is dynamite. Caribbean Insight. Really super. Was spite. Caribbean Insight. Enjoy day or night. Caribbean Insight. Dynamite. Welcome to another edition of Caribbean Insight, the number one Caribbean show here in the USA today. I'm your host, Lady V, and tonight you're going to be hearing Pan like you've never heard it before. We'll be featuring the Panorama Champions of the 20th century. But before we get ready to visit the land of steel, let's listen to a historical overview of the steel pan from a pan pioneer. A little bit before the bamboo, they used to have iron and drums on the streets. The greater part of the steel bands was, came from areas where you had the Soratia or Rada, or where the African religion was practiced, where you had the drums and the sticks and so on. Even in the iron, but the steel that you play is part of the original instruments that is used, because I asked the question, I went to a feast, what they call a, a ebo, or some, something like that, the religious ceremony, and I saw this fellow chant a ho. So I asked the question, what is it all about? And he told me it's a welcome song. It is chiming for an entity, or what they call a power, a certain power they have to chime this piece of steel. So I got an idea where the steel came from along with the drum. The steel band in itself, we have to say, they inherit a sort of a stigma. The stick fighter, the drums, this was very important again, because the stick fighter who fought all about in various years that they had in Port of Spain, they used the drums. And uh, they, they, it's the same sort of people that come into this with the bamboo and with the steel band. So they, when, when they people see they say, you, you, you with this, you are Kaladiwa, you are Bajon, you know, they all kind of names. Long before there were actually a steel band on the streets, I saw and heard pan beatings on the streets during carnival period. The people who are most famous for that was in like about all about sailors. Carnival lady, they knock two pans and knock the pans, they would pull what is and they make a joyful noise and dance and sing on the street. That I mean that was even before the time of we called Fancy Sailor. Or so it evolved from the knockabout to the we called Fancy Sailor, which was in the thirties and then eventually what you call the James Sailor. So the pan as I know it, or the steel band which I rather to say the steel band. At the period when it came in, it, 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 it sort of married with the bamboo. So bamboo and the steel band play together. And eventually, the pan plays out the bamboo. The first pan that you were able to distinguish was the pan that carried the, from the, carried over from the drum, which we call a beast. It was, the West eventually called it a, a dodo. It's from the same rhythm of the drum. That was the driving force of the steel band in that period. But eventually, they named that pan a kittle. They had the base kittle, and then you had the kittle. Well, the kittle was the first instrument from which they were able to play any kind of melody. But the coming of World War II, in 1941 or 42, they said, they drove them off the streets. When they, when they chased the fellows off the streets, they didn't sort of put down the instruments. They went about innovating and inventing. But V Day, when they declared, well, war ceased. Then this, the fellows came on the road with an instrument like this. 
So this is what you call the mother pan. At the big, we call it a ping pong. So this is the mother ping. This is the mother ping pong of the 55 gallon drum that you have today. Between this and the 55 gallon drum, this is the intermediate pan that came about. Then came the Elimanet period. When Elimanet brought about a new idea, and he reversed the procedure and grew the pans as you know them today. Now you know how this once discarded oil drum became the only musical instrument to be created in the 20th century. Let's revisit the year 1964 and listen to North Stars playing Lord Kitchener's Mama This Is Mass, music arranged by Anthony Williams. And watching the best of pan here first time in New York on the number one Caribbean show here in the USA today now don't be caught home alone pick up the phone call a friend call a neighbor and let them know that here on Caribbean Insight we are bringing you the pan flavor and I'll be right back with much more. I'm the Lord Kitchen. This is Rootsman. This is Sunel Dempster. My name is Winston Bailey, better known as Shadow. This is Calypsonian Squeezy. I watch no other but Caribbean Inside. Caribbean Inside, ready is dynamite. Caribbean Inside, really super for spite. Caribbean Inside, enjoy day or night. Caribbean Inside, Dynamite. We're back here in Caribbean Insight and remember you're watching Panorama Champions of the 20th Century. 
Now the people who made this pan, the tuners, are some of the most important people in the steel band movement. Some of the early pioneers of this instrument are Neville Jewels, Ellie Manet, Anthony Williams, Bertie Marshall, and the great deceased Rudolph Charles. Now let's hear from Bertie Marshall, another pioneer in the steel band movement. I was really born in St. Vincent Street. When I was a little boy, my mother and my father moved to John John. And it's there I started to see steel band from them as a little boy. Took him about six, seven years old. Went to the arm and the St. Louis school, I just spray on them. You know what I mean, doing the thing. I like hear the melodies that come into the pan and thing, and I used to play motor gun and thing. So, I run away and used to go below a house to learn to be pan because my mother didn't like steel band at all. She wanted me to be a doctor. I wanted to tune too, so I go up in, you know, in the bush in them days, in the back of the day, they have, you know, a little ravine and bush of things walking there. We light up, we fire and drink into the pan. We don't go so we see spree and them do not. In the at the time, we tried to burn a pan below the house. And in those, the house I'm talking about was about two feet off the ground, you know, a low house. So we get in below there and we light the fire. Two or three feet above right there. And we light a fire and the fire get out of control because below the house have a lot of rubbish. But you talk about legs. First thing happened, we get an old pan from Tokyo. And I'm trying to tune it over. And so from that age, that right, young age, I started really. Because it's a pretty harmonica. And man, harmonica helped me in later days because when I discover harmonics, which is a new order, the order they use today in children's band, it's through the harmonica, by hand the overtones. And I started to experiment. I experimented for a long while. And then about in 1956, I started to, 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 to get the harmonics because I experimented for a while, you know? And I started to get the harmonics. And from there, silver stars and most of the bands come around me to, um, to, to tune the bands and things. But in those days, you know, they had no money and things. Trying to introduce a um, wider range of bands and uh, until I end up in the late days, even amplifying. You know, trying to cut down the size of the steel band because I find it economically, it was not profitable. But the best um, thing was in the late half when I get on to trying to elongate the notes. You know, like it's a note and to put um, between the the, the thing and the decay, the evolution of the decay. It, it, it could linger instead of you have to roll. You could roll too if you want, but I feel that, um, you know, a, a continuous song, when you strike it, a continuous song. But then you have to control that, you know. So there's where a mechanical part had to come in and thing. I was on a good thing and then I had a disastrous fire, they burned out everything. So I never go back into that. Then in 90 centers, I don't go 90 centers, I don't go to Google. I'm the sparrows. You know, for them for about 22 years, you know, you know. And he like experiments too. So both of we meet up. And then we bring all this quadrophonic, you know, the martial tunes. Anything, consulting me because, you know, I am more experienced in the tuning than him. But he have ideas and we used to work together. I miss him a lot for that. Well, I know by now it's getting hot in your space. But listen. The band Desperado started in the 1940s by a group of young men known as the Dead End Kids. In the 1950s, they became known as Desperados. So let's revisit the year 1983 and listen to the Desperados playing Blue Boy's Rebecca under the leadership of Mr. Clyde Bradley.
I know you've never had it like this before. But don't be selfish. Pick up the phone, call a musical lover, and let them know that here on Caribbean Insight, we're bringing you the pan flavor. And I'll be right back with much more. I'm Super Blue. My name is Gypsy. My name is Barry Simon. This is The Messenger. Nobody touch your dial now. Glenn Washington says so. Caribbean Insight. Depths. Caribbean Insight. Caribbean Insight. Caribbean Insight. Please check Caribbean Insight. We're back here on Caribbean Insight, the program that educates and entertains. Anthony Williams is another pan pioneer, and his invention created a new dynasty within the evolution of pan. But let's listen to Anthony Williams tell his story. I started working on a small biscuit tin that I first uh, I put four notes and made it into and played Mary Had a Little Lamb. The Americans had a, a bass down on Mokorapon. They had a little abundance of oil drums scattered there, dumped there. So I got uh, one day a roller put on the drum and I started to work on the oil drum. The task made a great effect on the steel band. It introduced the chromatic steel band. Prior to that, only the ping pong was tuned to the chromatic scale. But Griffith wanted a chromatic steel band. Joseph Griffith was the musical director. So he introduced the chromatic tenor bomb, the bass, and the double second, and the alto pong. So that was how TASPO came to be a popular steel band. And they were able to play almost any type of music on the pans with the chromatic steel band. In 1951, Tasper went to Britain to perform at the Festival of Britain. And there they played on television and at the Savoy Hotel and uh, as a Mecca dance hall, a chain of dance hall called the Mecca dance halls. And then they went to Paris and played at the Medrano Circus. This came out in 1952. It's, it's designed in Fort Sanchez. That is this was C, F, C, D, E, F. I drew from straight lines from the center to the outside of the pan, to the edge of the drum, and made some straight lines crossing, and it appeared to be a spider web. And somebody said it looked like a spider web, called it spider web, and so it got its name spider web. But after that, I started working on pan on stands, the second pan. I put them on, a, I made a wooden stand for it, and I hung it on the stand because it was it sung a little better when it was hanging. I noticed when it rests on the leg, it kills some of the reverberation. I wanted to use the chromatic bass on the road, so uh, we couldn't put the pan around the neck on the road because. We had to get the bass, and the bass contained three drums at the time. So we couldn't carry three oil drums around the neck. So we had to put it on wheels, so I put pan on wheels in 1956. Well, the evolution of pan continues here on Caribbean Insight. And you're watching Panorama Champions of the 20th century. But as you guys know, I'm a chick from South. And in 1967, Guinness Cavaliers took Tong by storm with Kitchener 67, music arranged by Bobby Muhammad.
champions of the 20th century continues here on Caribbean Insight. You know what to do. Pick up the phone, dial someone, tell them to tune in, and I'll be right back with much more Pan History. This is Denise Sosu of Belfort. Hi, I'm Nicole Graves. Hi, this is Marcia Miranda. I am Mavis John. I'm Calypso Twiggy. This is Sunel Dempster. I watch Caribbean Insight. Yeah, yeah. Caribbean Insight. Caribbean Insight. Caribbean Insight, please check Caribbean Insight. We're back here and you're enjoying the best of Pan, panorama champions of the 20th century. The Pan was a substitute for the then outlawed Tambu Bamboo. And this is how the evolution of the Pan started. But let's go to Dr. Roderick Thompson, a researcher on the pan, and listen to his analysis of this. By 1945, the pans that were available had only a few notes each. And therefore, the kind of music that the steel band could play at that stage was music that had very simple tunes like nursery rhymes. And this is how they started playing nursery rhymes and other simple um, four or five note melodies until they expanded to more notes per pan. But the enthusiasts started experimenting with the songs, the popular songs of the day, songs from film and stage and so on, uh, all the songs that were on the hit parade, those that they could manage. Some they couldn't manage because the pans were not tuned to the point where you got sharps and flats yet. They just had the ordinary uh, diatonic scale do, remi fa so that do kind of thing. And um, eventually they tuned the pans better and they, got those, they, they were able to play a greater variety of the tunes from stage and screen. But Calypso was always an important constituent of early pan music because if you consider that the pan was developed as a substitute for the outlawed tambu bamboo which was the calypso accompaniment of the less privileged classes in the country areas during carnival and tambu bamboo having been part an integral part of carnival celebrations naturally its successor, which was the steel instruments, became also an integral part of the carnival celebrations. And since Calypso was a carnival thing, naturally the, the players of the steel, when they started to play melodies, started to play Calypsos as early as they played any other kind of music. So that Calypso was, was quite early associated with Sing along with the tune they're playing And now one again you shouting Play my buck and all this tourist That is carnival Kitchener and Terra are the ones that stick out in my mind Because I think they have done probably more than many of the other Calypsonians for the steel band. Composed about steel band and in order to be played on the steel band. You see, in the early days, say from 19, the late 1950s, mid 1960s, the bands were experimenting while they were playing with their, their playing calypsos and playing the, 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 the music from screen and stage. They were also experimenting with the classics. But there were two parallel trends as far as the classics were concerned. They played the classics with calypso syncopation, calypso tempo. And because of the music, music festival influence, they attempted the calypso also, the, 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 the classics also, um, with orthodox interpretation. So that on Carnival Monday morning, Juve, they came out with these calypso arrangements of the classics and they would not let the judges know what they were going to play. I want to say thanks to Dr. Thompson and remember you're watching 
Panorama Champions of the 20th Century. Here on the number one Caribbean show in the USA today, Caribbean Insight. The name of the band in 1935 was Hell Yard Boys. And this band changed its name on many occasions. It was known as Second Fiddle, Cross of Lorraine, and All Stars. But then in the 1940s, Trinidad was added to it. Let's revisit the year 1980 and listen to Trinidad All Stars, the Panorama Champions, doing Scrunters Kaiso, Woman on the Bass. Though they weren't sponsored, they won the Panorama Champions twice. Let's revisit the year 1988 and listen to Panorama Champion. <music> Guys, you know women is boss, but listen, I gotta pay some bills and I have some more giveaways. So stay tuned, I'll be right back with much more. I'm the Lord Kitchen. This is Denise Saucy while Bell Fawn. This is KMC. My name is Barry Sam. This is Marshall Montano. And I hope you will do as I do. Keep listening to them. Caribbean inside. Caribbean inside. Caribbean inside. Please check Caribbean inside. Whoa, whoa! Where is this one she got it? Well, we were down in the land of steel for the past hour. You have heard Pan like you've never heard. 